What's up everyone, his royal finest here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be reviewing the new kid on the block, the Škoda T27, which is a tier H Czechoslovakian premium auto-loading medium tank that has just been released and which may have one of the most potent auto-loading guns in tier 8. So, I will of course be covering the kind of characteristics of this tank, briefly discuss its playstyle, and naturally show you the live gameplay because that is the best way to see how a vehicle performs in general situations. So, I said it had a very potent gun, and that's because you are dealing 660 damage in 3 seconds. You have 220 alpha damage, 3 shells in a magazine with a 1.5 second interclip. That is more damage than tank destroyers in tier 8, and heck even tier 9 in 3 seconds. So what is stopping this tank from being completely broken per se? Well, there are other characteristics that we must also discuss. For instance, penetration. With calibrated shells, you only have 200 AP pen, 250 on the APCR. That's not enough to deal with a lot of tanks you're going to face frontally, which is good. It's a good balancing feature, but what really kills this tank's gun from being completely broken is its accuracy. On paper, it looks pretty good. 0.32 dispersion and everything like that, but you have pretty poor dispersion factors after firing on the move and during rotation. And what that means is your bloom's just going to be pretty big in general, and since you have a 3.3 second aim time, you can kind of do the math there, a 1.5 second interclip with a 3.3 second aim time and poor dispersion means if you're dumping your shot after shot after shot in your magazine, you will never be fully aimed in. And if you're trying to snipe a weak spot or any kind of distance engagement, this gun will troll you a lot. There were a lot of occasions where you're only going to hit two out of three and heck even one out of three zero out of three shots because you're just trying to shoot that full magazine off while you're peeking for uh, three seconds um and you don't necessarily just want to sit there and aim the whole time because if you sit there aiming you're kind of ruining the specialty of this tank which is its ability to dump damage that means this vehicle is suited to tvp style gameplay where you find a position where you can dump a magazine into a tank from medium to close distance and pull back in the cover and wait in very kind of opportunistic manner that is what this tank does best and that's where the gun is going to perform the best because in terms of armor you have none you're an he magnet sides heable rear heable and heck i even got he'd by a brimatyl borsig through the lower plate for 1015 it was not a very fun experience so yeah armor is not great in terms of mobility it's pretty average 50 top speed with decent power to weight and traverse speeds but you know nothing extraordinary eight degrees of gun depression and of course 2000 dpm which once again isn't really anything extraordinary so while this tank is extremely potent in terms of dumping its magazine, and if you manage to hit all three shells, it is so deadly in that manner, everything else about it is so kind of average that it prevents the tank from being anything special. And the big question I'm sure a lot of you guys have is, will this tank be better than the Progetto 46? In my opinion, the Progetto 46 is still the Seal Clubber's dream, still the go-to, probably best tier 8 medium tank you can play. It's just so, so versatile, whereas the Skoda is more niche. It is specializing in a certain field which is dumping damage in a short period of time but it's not versatile and with that in mind you definitely want to watch out for that when you're playing the vehicle and really just be an opportunistic tank you're not a brawling vehicle a haul down fighting vehicle you're just all about getting that magazine off preferably at a closer distance so you could hit your shells at least now there is one major kind of caveat to this vehicle which i'm sure most of you are familiar with nowadays that is the fact that it's carried in crates with a five percent drop chance so yay gambling everyone loves gambling i am of course joking um I personally will never recommend people to buy crates. In fact, I'm free to play, so I don't buy tanks anyways, unless I get very lucky and can buy it with gold I've accumulated. So there you go. I'm only making this video so you guys know what to expect from this vehicle if you're considering it. I will not tell you to buy this. I don't think it's worth it, to be honest. While it's a cool, unique, and quite often fun tank, I just don't think uh, gambling's gonna be worth it. So it's your decision, just throwing it out there. It is a good tank, but it's up to you whether you really want to get this vehicle. And I think with that out of the way, let's jump into those live games to just demonstrate what this vehicle is capable of. Now. There are two different scenarios for this tank, top tier and bottom tier. When you're top tier, this vehicle can slap, especially against tier 7s. Uh, but when you're bottom tier and you're facing like, off against tanks like a T-30 or a Conway or heck, even an M46 Pan, it can be pretty painful. So you'll want to keep that in mind. Don't worry, it will. the screen will reappear in just a moment. It's just uh, bugging out when I picked up my iPad. Um, 
Darn it! Why does it do this? Okay, um, we're gonna skip till the game starts. Ta-da! We're back, we're back. Hi guys, sorry you had to miss out on that. Um, it just meant I was AFK and spawned for about 20 seconds, but we're back. That's the good news. And, um, looking at this lineup, let's see. The enemy team are very mobile. They don't have very many heavy tanks. They are capping C, but I think it's more likely they would send forces this way. However, our Pantera hasn't spotted anyone, so... That's kind of good news, I guess. Uh, means their team is probably actually not headed this way. Good. Okay, so I'm just going to push through. And kind of my mission for this battle is to, well, hello, catch someone off guard and dump that magazine into them. There we go. One, two, three. That's very nice. We're going to try and avoid that T-49. And that's where this tank is potent. That poor T-54 Mod 1 got caught out of position. And you can just say goodbye to his vehicle. Now, I'm not going to over push this because I don't want to get, you know, donked by this T-49. But if possible, I do want to see if there's a way for me to put an HE clip into it. So 290 with that shell. We're going to put another H oh, 57 only. We're going to try and angle up our sides here. Hopefully he doesn't HE us. He does hit us with heat at least. Um, and there we go. He gets taken out. So if I had penned all three HE shots there, I would have done probably about 700 damage. It's a little sad that I didn't pen those HE, all those HE shells, but not a bad start to this game. And it definitely shows what this vehicle is capable of. Now we should have easy shots on this pan. Let's put one shot into him, two shots into him, and maybe even three for 690. And there we go. Tanks performing. But all of this fight has been ideal because for the most part i've been shooting at the sides and rears of vehicles and i haven't been the prioritized target right i'm not trying to i'm not getting pushed on i'm not being pressured by hold on vehicles i'm in the right scenario to just dump damage into vehicles that aren't paying attention to me and that is what you do want to do in a vehicle like this right is dump that damage into vehicles that aren't paying attention to you and we get a miracle bounce from the t30 somehow we're gonna put a full magazine just to finish this tank off there looks like the conway's gonna go down soon actually he's afk so we can ignore him and this game's over so pretty fast 7-0 game yay you love those ideal sweeps i'm just kidding i hate sweep games they're so annoying even when you're on the winning team um and there we go that is your skoda t t71 or i keep calling it 71 t27 so 2.5k damage not too bad being the 50 m did well there let's jump into another game i want to show you some battles where the vehicle struggles a little bit more because that was just kind of honestly a, cl a clean sweep so there was nothing for me to really worry about too much that game um, but you know in those more intense games you will struggle now I'm happy we're getting tier 9 matches because tier 8 is a tier where you are thrown in tier 9 quite often So that's good news because this is gonna be a more realistic expectation of what you're gonna be facing I think when you first get these vehicles you kind of get that newbie matchmaking for like 5 or 10 games We're always top tier which is fun, but um, it's not really realistic That's why I always play about 20 games in a vehicle before making a video on it that way We are out of any kind of preferential matchmaking phases, so Let's jump into this next game here. Yamato Harbor, small map, tier 9 matchup. Enemy team, once again, mm, they are pretty dominant in terms of medium tanks. We might be able to get an early magazine off, but I really don't like this matchup, which is good. This is a very not cool scenario, in my opinion, for this tank. So it looks like we have a Centurion Rack crossing. Let's put one shell into his tank here, two shells into his tank here, and he gets tracked. How can we probably put a shell into his lower plate there? And I did take my time to aim those shells in a little bit more thoroughly because he's crossing in the open. There's no way he's going to really make it across there unscathed or, you know, you know, without me getting the full magazine into him. So I was taking the time to aim there instead of just dumping on the reload. Now, looks like there's a tank on the ship here. Uh, T26 of some kind. I don't know if I have clean shots on him. We should get a shell onto him just in a moment here. I'm just waiting for him to pull forward. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. One shot into his side, two shots into him, and we might be able to get a third shot onto him. 680. And there we go. We are making this gun sing quite well, doing a lot of damage. It looks like the enemy team went ship, which is kind of a surprise. I was expecting with their very mobile, medium esque lineup that they would be more likely to send their tanks in towards seaside but looks like they're not sending their whole force towards sea which is good we have an mx m4 here so we're gonna put one shell into him we're gonna put shell towards his tracks there he's not quite looking and i don't know if this dude's looking at me either oh no the amx is pulling forward i'm gonna see if he tries to shoot at me let's put a shot towards the lower plate that's not gonna hit the gun isn't really snappy enough for me to hit that now in terms of the scenario i am in there's a pan coming up behind me so yeah that's kind of scary there's also an m4 just kind of tunneling me here and he does manage to hit that, which is kind of a rip. But he's also pulling into a ditch, which is good. Pan's now on C, and that's why I wanted to just pull forward if possible. I should have cover fire for my TDs. AMA, the AMX goes down there. Uh, they still have a Borsig. So we're going to have to watch out for that Rheimatile. We'll just be patient here. I can't really do much right now, unfortunately. Our AMX goes down. There's an IS-8 in the mid. I'm sure the Pan's going to push through C in just a moment. He actually didn't push through C, which means I should get a free clip into the back of this eyes. And there you go. There's that long aim time, bad dispersion, but we do manage to at least hit two 
out of our three shells there. So now we're at 2,000 damage. I think with, you know, we could pull off probably about 3k this game. I just need to make sure I don't die yet. They still have a full HP pen. The boar sig is probably over there. I think he got blind fired because he said he was complaining in chat. Um, so let's just keep chilling. There, these teams are sad. Poor man. He is not very happy with his life. And I think we can push to this corner now. Now, is the pen still here? That's a big question. Because the pen didn't cap a C. So where is he? I don't know. Let's put a click. Let's put a kill shot into this dude. There we go. And we're just gonna keep avoiding that Borsig potentially in the mid there. Oh boy. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna hug up here. Hopefully that Borsig's not looking. And the pan hopefully shouldn't have good shots on me. I'm assuming someone's gonna nuke him soon. If he tries to make that pressure, I didn't think he was gonna push down there. So um, that's a rip. We're gonna take a shell here now, and we'll just put a we'll, we'll dump a magazine into him. But let's be honest, we're not surviving this engagement. And so that's my 3,000 damage dealt. Oh, he low rolled. No RNG. You love me. Let's go. All right. The good news is. Zipan low rolled. Can we escape him? I think we can. Let's go. And the Borsig's out of the fight. So, or the... Well, yeah, the Borsig's out of the fight. So, Pan, can wait for you to shoot again. One shot. We should be able to pick up that kill. Man, that was lucky of me. Not gonna deny it. That was extremely, extremely lucky. And my team's gonna clutch this up. Once more, a very kind of one-sided match. So, kind of uncool. We were able to deal more damage there. I got very lucky with that Pan shot, of course. Um, let's jump into a third game. <laughs> These games aren't hard enough. These games have been too easy. And there you go. That's an ace, apparently. So let's try out for a third game because these have been very chill kind of just farming simulators for my tank. Yay. I have about 2,700 average in this tank, about 25 games or so now. So decent average. It's definitely not my best in tier. In fact, I think my F301, um, is that what it is? F301, the tier 8 um, light tank from Britain. I have like almost 3k average in that vehicle right now and so you know it did it is kind of hit or miss but it will perform pretty well overall this vehicle does perform pretty well it's just gambling everyone i just i can't i can't condone gambling guys i, I just really can't uh especially for a tier 8 that i think while good is not going to be something that's an absolute must have and if i'm honest with you i think a lot of players agree with that because Boy, I have seen almost none of these tanks. In fact, I've seen about 5 in 25 battles. That is a very low number for a brand new tier 8 medium vehicle, which usually would sell pretty well. But I think the fact that this tank is low-key kind of ugly and for many players doesn't bring anything particularly new to the game, just means they don't want to gamble for it i think if it was sold for you know outright gold or whatever sure it'd be it would be pretty popular but that's not the case right so this t49 is probably going to poke me any moment now you can see the gun handling wasn't too great against m103 weren't able to quite snapshot him there i don't know what this t49 is doing or when he's going to pull out there we go one shot into the t49 there we probably get a second shell towards his turret not able to snap that one that was more my aim than the gun's fault there but um you know only one shot out of the start of this game so that's not too spectacular enemy team is going towards town obviously I'm just going to wait till my camouflage resets. I think the T49 is peaking here. So let's see if he tries to make a break for it. Or if he tries to shoot our ICU. Oh, he chose the wrong time to run away. Uh, once again, the gun just isn't quite snappy enough for me to hit that shell, which is a little unfortunate. Well, let's put that one. Uh, the auto aim tracked onto the VK. Man, sometimes auto aim is just so annoying. This game has been awful for the start of this battle. We've got no early damage and we're just sitting here doing nothing. So... I think what I'm going to do here is try to help our VK1608. We have a few tanks holding in our spawn. And I think if the enemy team is distracted on our VK, they should give me pretty easy shots here. So let's see what this AMX is doing. Put one HE shot to him for 300. Two HEs into him. We should be able to finish on with an AP 760. And that's the kind of ideal clips you want with this vehicle. Find those vehicles that aren't paying attention and absolutely slap them. In that case, in the rear for a very hefty amount of damage of 700. And that's where that clip does feel really good. So let's put a shell towards this AT-15. And here's where that accuracy, you can see aiming, aiming. You just have to spend an extra second aiming there if you want to hit your shots more reliably. So I did, I'm glad I was able to show that because, you know, you're not going to be dumping your full magazine. You might, you might be dumping your magazine in like 2.2 seconds between shots if you're fully aiming instead of 1.5 seconds between shots. So just keep that in mind. Now, in this kind of scenario against the VK's lower plate, we should easily be able to shoot this on the reload. So we're doing good damage here. Sure, I could be flanking, but uh, this enemy team 
seems very content to just kind of sit in front of us. And since I have uh, this whole firing squad on my right hand side here to distract the enemy team from me, I have been able to just kind of farm up here for free without getting shot at. Now I'm sure the M103 is going to penetrate on to me. I'm not too worried about that. We're going to put one shot, two shot, three shot into the AT-15 there. And we've already dealt 2,700 damage to this game. Uh, I think this is going to be another steamroll, if I'm honest with you. Just looking at how this game is progressing, we have already farmed out so many tanks here, and I've legitimately just sat in a ditch this game and farmed them out from here. Now, you can see the gun depression at 8 degrees is good, but it's not always the best. We do manage to pick up a kill on this dude. I'm going to reload my magazine once again, and that way I have a full clip for when this M103 and Tiger 2 push onto me. I don't think I'm going to push into here by myself, because if they both push around that corner, I will be kind of isolated. Now, we're going to watch. Is the M103 turning around? He is not. So, they're going to push me here. Now, I'm unspotted. Hopefully, the Tiger gives me a free shot onto his side there. One shell, two shots. We might be able to put a shot through the front of his turret as well. 690. We've dealt 3,700 damage. M103 is getting slapped over there. So, this game's over. And, unfortunately, all three of these games were steamrolls. I mean, that's just the case in Tier 8. But, I can tell you, I did have some games earlier that were just extremely painful painful and tier 9 matchups where the enemy team was just a lot better than what we had here so let's see if we can pick up a kill on this dude as well four kills four thousand damage for the final game farm fest ideal scenarios these are good situations for this tank just showing you yeah it can be good but really don't expect this type of gameplay or this kind of scenario all that often especially if you're in a map like let's say let's just create a theoretical situation here dead rail the enemy team have two medium tanks you're the only medium tank and you just have to sit back and try and hold the flank you're going to get slaughtered you can't work the mid because those tank destroyers are going to kill you that's an unideal situation for this tank and those games you may only get one or two magazines off before dying uh that happened to me actually a couple times on dead rail where this tank uh, is just outnumbered in terms of mediums i couldn't hold up and i couldn't deal damage but then you get games like this where the enemy team are just kind of wandering around giving you clips and let's be honest i think it doesn't really matter what tank i was in i would have done good damage in that situation regardless it doesn't mean the tank is amazing it just means the scenario is right just want to let you guys know so there we go that's my video on the skoda t27 decent tank you can make it work um I don't think it's a must-have buy vehicle, so if you want to get it for something that's interesting, and I will admit this tank is unique, there are no tier 8 medium tanks that have this kind of clipping potential uh, in 3 seconds, let's be honest. So in that aspect, it is a unique and pretty fun overall vehicle, but it's up to you if you want to gamble. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe for more content to come. I will catch you all guys later, and I just completely screwed up my outro. Uh, retake! Alright, so thank you so much everyone for watching today's video please feel free to like the video and subscribe for more content to come you guys are awesome and i hope you all have a wonderful day Saeed on the mix.